Operation Confidence proudly presents America's Invisible Heroes Radio Talk Show. Tune in weekly on Sundays from 2 to 3.30 p.m. Pacific Time with your hosts, Consuela Mackey, co-host, U.S. Air Force veteran, Matt Davidson, announcers, Taylor Marcella and Brooke Gadesi, U.S. Army veteran and entertainment host, Charles Whitehead, U.S. Army Special Forces veteran, and I once was whole segment host, Richard Cook. U.S. Army veteran and lifeline for women's veterans segment host, Martha Elena Varela. National Faith Program Director and Veterans in Recovery segment host, Anthony Akinpora. And U.S. Air Force veteran and incarceration to success segment host, Kevin Lewandowski. For more information or to be a guest on our show, email info at operationconfidence.org. Operation Confidence is a grassroots nonprofit. The organization's mission is to provide stable housing for veterans who have experienced homelessness, as well as providing a wide range of supportive services. To help accomplish our goal, a successful landowner has donated land for the project, a world-renowned architect has offered to design the houses, and construction classes from the local community colleges will take part in building the houses. Your support and donations are needed. To get involved, please visit our website at www.operationconfidence.org or email info at operationconfidence.com. Well, welcome everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Americans Invisible Heroes, a show dedicated to our veterans and their families. Yes, I'm your host, Consuela Mackey, Executive Director of a grassroots nonprofit organization called Operation Confidence. No, I'm not a veteran, but my heart goes out to those who are disabled and may have been experiencing homelessness. For those who are new to the show, American Invisible Heroes has, was established to provide a platform for our veterans to be able to share their experiences heartfelt stories, resources, and challenges. Uh, we want to let you all know that we're happy to be here today, and I must now introduce our co-host, U.S. Army veteran Charles Whitehead. He's a board member and a co-host. Taylor Marcellus, she's a board member and one of our announcers. U.S. Army veteran Martha Varela, she's on our advisory board and she has a segment each, each week called Lifeline to the New Veterans. Then we have U.S. Army veteran Dr. Cash, Dr. Kathy Cash. She has a bi-monthly segment called Strategies for Hope. And then today we have U.S. Army veteran John Oppenheim, who has a monthly segment called Voices from the Hood. They just don't like the Air Force. Okay. <laughs> and then last but not least, we have U.S. Special Forces veteran Richard Cook. He has a bi bi monthly segment called I Once Was Old. Say hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Okay. Go ahead, Martha. It's on you, girlfriend. Okay, well, I'll make that correction really quickly. Today, it is my honor to introduce our monthly segment host, U.S. Air Force veteran, oh, my John son. Oppenheim. Please Thank forgive you. me, John. Please <laughs> forgive me. Okay, my my apologies. John is an Air Force policeman. John is an Air Force veteran, retired businessman, COO of City Heart, a Long Beach nonprofit, and an advocate for veterans. John is also the COO of the Veterans Council by City Heart, as well as a very active member in the community. Um, in addition to his advocacy work, John also assists the Paralyzed Veterans of America California chapter as a consultant. Um, John also brings a wealth of financial knowledge, and so he is currently helping PVA with some of their financial needs. And we almost forgot that he's also a yoga instructor. Um, so Tuesdays in the morning, John does yoga for all veterans in case anyone is interested. Did I leave anything out, John? <laughs> uh, yeah, when do I sleep? Yeah, 
His guest today is Miss Donna K K Kosh, Quach. 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 founder mm -hmm. of Our You Matter Not Alone. Is that correct? Yes, You Matter Not Alone charity organization. You Matter Not Alone. Okay, suicide prevention charity. A nonprofit 501c3 organization established in 2018. Miss Squatch is a licensed, licensed psychotherapist and an Army Medical Officer, Veterans Officer, specializing in trauma and high risk. Since the charity's establishment in 2018, YMNA's main mission is dedicated to supporting our armed forces with mental health awareness and human advocacy work all around the world. I like that human advocacy work. Although the charity is only four years old, the organization functions like it has been around for decades. Donna's clinical team and mental health advocates for mental health and suicide prevention education for provide education for our veterans, children, and the community. In 2020, Donna created the Battle Buddies app that focuses around providing a safety net and a familiar voice for our veterans to reach out to when they are in distress. This app also addresses PTSD, mental illness, aging veterans, a vet the veteran community at large, and is also a resource page within the community. Since the charity's establishment, YMNA's main mission, oh, we already said that, okay. Um, all right, so that is a brief des description of some of the wonderful work that your guest is doing, John, and I will let you take it from here. Right, well, and the, I met Donna actually at a function in Long Beach put on by the first district councilwoman, and it was a dog walk on it for July 4th, and they had a booth there and so did we. And uh, those of you who remember the, I think it was the last time I was on, I was talking about the loneliness and isolation of veterans. And so I was walking around introducing myself and I met Donna, who also started as part of her thing, uh, something called Battle Buddies. And it's an application that focuses around it, safety net. And uh, th this is something that's really unusual to me. Uh, and just because of where I volunteer we have people who are living in apartments, but they're still lonely. You know, you can be lonely in a crowd is what they say. And so I got to talking to Donna and Jacqueline, her uh, associate, and realized that they've got something pretty special there because people don't get up and go to the VA to get a uh, little mental health help. A lot of people who are lonely are not necessarily not suffering from a mental illness, although depression is a mental illness. And I don't want to take Donna's uh, stuff away. So I'm, I'm going to leave it with that. But it, it's really impressive and, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, something that we at City Heart, we've already met with them and we're very anxious to kind of get going. So with that, Donna, I'll let you take it away. Thank you, John. First of all, I wanted to say thank you. Thank you for having me here today as a guest and being able to talk a little bit more about our charity and also our Battle Buddy app. And for the ones that are, you know, has served and is a veteran, thank you for your service. I always greatly admire that as a, a prior officer veteran in the medical field, um, medical um, Again, you know, our job is always to look after our veterans and to, and our, our forces to make sure that, um, you know, we support them the best we can. Um, with that, um, again, in 2018, I started um, a nonprofit called You Matter Not Alone. And our focus was, our main mission was to provide um, support mental health care for our veterans and our active service members. Uh, I am a provider, a community provider for the VA, you know, and I, you know, we take in about 60 quarterly. And so my specialty in my civilian world is uh, a psychotherapist. I'm a licensed marriage, family, child, family therapist with a specialty in trauma base and also uh, with suicide um, prevention. So with that being said, again, you know, treating over 2000 plus veterans in the last 15 years uh, with PTSD and giving them a second opportunity of life to live. So we use very advanced modality such as EMDR, uh, IFS, 
I also refer them out for hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Uh, we also look at, you know, um, TMS, which is um, a transcranial um, stimulation for their brain with depression. And so just about two years ago, right when we were going into COVID, I got, I, I got a little bit frustrated with the VA because I felt as though the, the veteran suicide hotline wasn't good enough. Um, they were closing, they closed down at five. And I kept telling them in the meeting that it's, you know, uh, PTSD and mental health issues and suicide does not end at five. I've also had, you know, other concerns because this, our suicide rate right now is 17 a day. Our veterans who are, you know, uh, uh, our active service members who are returning back from multiple deployments are taking their lives pretty much as they transition into the veteran world. And it's very hard for them. So again, um, 17 per day, that number is still really high, you know, and so during COVID, it was extremely high twice as, you know, even I would say even 30 a, a day. So I got together with a development team and decided that, you know, we need to use technology in the 20th century right now in order to really save the lives of our heroes. And so, and that's where the Battle Buddy, you know, was um, established. The Battle Buddy is um, focused around five pillars. The first one is a safety net for our active service members who are ready to transition out of the military and into the, um, into the civilian world. It is a very difficult time for them. It is a very stressful time for them. And so having a familiar voice and being able to press on that button using their app, you know, it's, it's an app where you can download it. Um, through your um, your Android or your iPhone, and you know you, they can just press the button, and they will have um, their own brothers and sister. This uh, this is a veteran to veteran peer hotline um, that everybody on this app is a mentor and is trained by our clinical team um, to be able to handle crisis, transi transitioning, aging care for our veterans, and so forth, and PTSD, mental health issues. Um, homelessness. And, you know, so my, my reason for this app is again, you know, we're living in the 20th century and everybody has a cell phone. And so given with that, you know, once they have that app, they have their brothers and sisters at arms at any given time, 24 hours a day, 300, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days out of the year. And it's, it's extremely and ex immensely important to really stay connected with our veterans. Not only does this app, again, with our advanced technology is to save lives, it addresses, you know, the aging um, population of our veterans. It also addresses PTSD, homelessness, um, and also mental health related issues. We can get to them within two minutes. Once, the, once they press on that button, um, you know, we, um, we, we get an alert on our phone and we can, again, get to them within less than two minutes if they are suicidal, if they are triggered, um, or even if they just need a, a familiar voice. So it's extremely important to us. Um, it's, it's getting attention in Washington. And I am my main goal right now is to get funding under the EVEST Act. The EVEST Act um, was passed in January. And it really secures when uh, it, it ensures that every active service member will get connected once they get they become a veteran. And I'm hoping that you know once when when the Battle Buddy app is added on to that, we will get proper government funding. It is our it is the government's in my eyes and working in the last ten years and the last fifteen years with our veterans. It is our job, you know, to take care of our our veterans when they return back. The government's job, you know. So with that being said, again, if you guys have any questions, that's kind of a little bit about our Battle Buddy app. And I'm more than happy to answer any questions or anything like you, that you may have, or if your viewers um, have any questions, you guys can always reach out to me at youmatternotalone at gmail.com. It's all one word. Can you repeat that again? Yes, you matter. So it's, you know, the, the, the whole, all the whole words is spelled out. So it's you matter not alone at gmail.com or you, the chat, chat for us as well yes i absolutely can and also you can also reach out, out to us at um the email you matter not alone at gmail.com and i'm going to go ahead and um put it in the chat box let's see thank you absolutely well i think that is amazing 
Um, Donna, I know that I've done a lot of uh, crisis work with veterans and non-veterans, but more recently with veterans. And um, you kind of hit it right on the head. You know, for for some of these providers, they they're they're fooled into believing that crisis happens conveniently between the hours of nine and five, which is insane. You know, um, and and I've used the the veteran crisis line again, not to knock the VA, but I think it was horrible. You know, I I would even sometimes offer to call the crisis line on behalf of the veteran in crisis to weed through the first five minutes of agonizing intake. They're so insensitive, some of them. And honestly, I didn't feel like they they gave the quality of care that someone in crisis really needed. You know, you can't um, refer them to a website or refer them to a program on Monday morning at 9 a.m. I mean, totally oblivious to what the needs are to someone in crisis. So this is amazing. And I know in particular for the PVA, you know, all of our veterans are, you know, <clears throat> aging and a lot of them, you know, are, are isolated at home due to, the, due to the nature of their spinal cord injury um, and particularly the, you know, the Vietnam veterans and some of the, the elderly vets. And so this is a, an ingenious way. I think it kind of reminds me of my work back in the day when I did um, kind of domestic violence work and we used to have pagers and we would be on call for the weekend. And when that pager went off, you got on the horn because it's very important. Like you said, you got two minutes mm -hmm. um, to reach out to them. And, and some arguably say that that 17 a day is even over 20 a day if, if it's being um, recorded properly. So it's it's a really big issue. And and I think this is amazing. And I, I wish you luck in funding. Um, I think that you got, you got something here that definitely there's a, there's a lot of new suicide prevention money. Um, and maybe you and I can kind of chat because there's a way we can kind of partner with both Operation Confidence as we're looking to move um, a little further in our in our housing project. And men mental health is definitely something that we want to make sure that we we address and, and incorporate into the, the programming, but also with PVA because I wear two hats. And, you know, just kind of um, just really quickly, it's just this the network here that we have is, is just such a, a beautiful cross pollination of, of folks that really genuinely care about the well-being of the veterans. And so it's really exciting to have you on, on board today. And I'd love to connect with you. Yeah, after. absolutely. Yeah, we're very excited and, as well. yeah, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. No, we're very excited to have you on. and want you to come back and share some more of this, this phenomenal uh, information that you have. So many of our veterans that are listening need to know more what you're doing, especially the, the older veterans. Our heart went out to hearing about them when John gave this wonderful report a couple of weeks ago. So it's important, yeah. very it, important. It, it absolutely is important, you know, and not just only that, we have a resource page in the app too as well. And obviously I'm the creator of the, the Battle Buddy app, but I designed it in a way where it was very simple. Um, it's a press of a button and it, it really, again, it will it, the, immediately within two minutes, we just had, for example, we had a homeless veteran, a soon to be homeless on Friday. And he just, you know, pressed that button. And within two minutes, we all got an alert, all our mentors. And within 10 minutes, we found him a place because he was going to be homeless by 4 p.m. Wow, now, amazing. that is, like I said, you know, again. Um, Pretty you know, amazing. We, absolutely. And mm -hmm. so we will, you know, in phase two, we will make sure that we have a pop up in terms of, um, you know, kind of tracking them where they're at because there's been times in working in trauma with our veterans we find them near the bridge and we find them near the railroad and things like that so that's going to be again with technology our technology is so advanced with this app that you know that will be another thing that it will be implemented in terms of a gps in there that will you know they need to give us permission but again it's only used for safety so that we know that they're in danger if they're near a railroad track or whatever it is we have that ability to, you know, let them know and to contact the police or the or the fire department immediately. Again, within two minutes. Well, I want to send you an email so I can share with more about what Operation Confidence is doing, mm -hmm. and most definitely hope to have your support yeah. involved with oh, that as well. Okay. I almost forgot. Is the app free, or is there a small charge for it? No, I refuse to. Um, I, I will not. Um, we will. It's completely free. Great. Um, it has been proposed to us in order to keep it going, you know, as a monetary do. But I, I, I do not believe in um, having our veterans pay. They, they, they've done enough. You know, they're served, they've served our country. So right now I'm looking at the government 
um, to make sure that they're funding us. And we have a good, you know, a good landing right now because we're working with Congressman um, to, to Kano and then also uh, um, and also the governor too as well. And it's our headquarters here in California. And so again, you know, I mean, it, and then the 988, it, we're also partnering with them too as well. So we're gonna, any veteran that calls into the 988 is gonna be referred back over to us with the Battle Buddy app. We will take all our veterans back. That's amazing. Congratulations. Congratulations. Great. Outstanding. I have a question, if I might. Yeah. Um, you obviously need volunteers to work the, the lines or whatever. And you were saying that, that you put them through training. Mm -hmm. How long is that training? It's 40 hours, you know, um, but the thing is right now, it's only really only a day's worth. And we have regular meetings with our mentors on a quarterly basis to update them. And so, but yeah, right now it's only a day's worth of training and we train them in substance use. We train them in transitioning. We train them in mental health and suicide preventions in five different categories. Um, but eventually once when we get funding, it's in our proposal that every mentor who is a, a veteran um, will go through an accreditation and also be certified as a battle buddy mentor. And that's 40 hours. Um, we vet them very well in terms, it can't be just any veteran, you know, and they have to go through two beta tests with us to make sure that when they pick up that phone and when they answer our veterans call, that they are, you know, caring and supportive right. um, and really ensuring that, you know, and we follow up, you know, even every 30 days, um, you know, there will be a follow up by one of our mentor because it will alert uh, on the app, it will alert our mentor that 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 men, that, veter that veteran needs to be um, needs to be followed up. And so our goal is 100% survival rate with our veterans. And um, that's our that's our mission. So we want to congratulate well, you on the job. Well done. You go, girl. That's so fat. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. And we have to get have to uh, let you know more about what we're doing. So yeah. that you can well, what's really, what's, really, what's really cool is there's a lot of small nonprofits out there. I'm getting so tired of working with the big ones who uh, think that, you know, they're the only ones up there. And they just, they have all their rules and regulations. The reason I asked about the training, um, the word peer counselor, or peer has, a, they actually pay people to be peers, but the amount of training they have to go through really restricts it. And uh, that's the, what you're doing is fantastic. Yeah. We, you know, we get involved in the same kind of thing. We could go through your training, actually. We're, we're always looking for, you know, uh, veterans who want to be, you know, our, our, you know, our mentors, you know, um, yeah. committed ones, you know, and so, and it's going to be a volunteer position and we're going to keep it even with funding. So we want to make sure that yeah. our, anybody who volunteers is really coming from your heart. It's something that we do not, you know, want you to exactly. work yeah. volunteer as uh, a patient. Question, so. question for you, mm -hmm. Donna. Do the veterans that talk to the mentors, do they, do they get to rate their um, mentors? That, that's a, that's phase number two, you know, and as soon as we get funding, we will allow that towards the end where you, you know how, I don't know if you guys are used to, um, but sometimes when you're using an app at the end, they'll like mm -hmm. ask for five stars and then right. at the bottom. But at, you know, at each of the Apple store, you know, that we're connected with and also with the, um, you know, the, the Google Play store at the bottom, you can actually rate our mentors too. You can rate our app too as well. And we actually encourage um, any veteran or any service member who's using our app to go ahead and, and put feedback. And there are some, there's not a lot, but on average right now, we just have only done a soft launch. Um, because again, we're waiting for funding to make a to, to do a bigger launch. But you know, again, you know, on a daily basis uh, or a weekly basis, we have about three to five veterans and active service members downloading our app, and so we can see the data, we can track them too as well. So we have so much access with advanced technology, that, um, and eventually in 2024, we will go worldwide because we're aware that our veterans live abroad. So and um, and then we're going to open up next year for our military families, you know, to be able to also have access to our, you know, um, uh, our uh, Battle Buddy app too. No, I have to congratulate you again. I mean, I think this yeah. is just amazing what you're doing yeah. and, and please look for my email because I definitely want to share with you what we're doing. And, and of course, we want you to come back again and 
and enlighten our audience, you know, yeah. because this is just so amazing. And and we like to also hear from some of their successes, some of the successful veterans that you've helped. Maybe if they're not embarrassed or if they're not shy, they'll come back on and tell we us about have, Yeah, we can definitely ask or we can definitely have our most, a couple of our mentors who, you know. Yeah. Um, like that that would be amazing they can talk about their experience you know um you know of who are you know who they've been helping but again you know i mean the most recent one was our our 4 p.m homeless and you seem to be homeless and within again 10 minutes we found them a place i think that's extraordinary yeah so (laughs) that always happens you on board yeah always and that's after four friday afternoon Uh, uh to sunday night and nobody's Open. No one's open. No one's around. Yeah. And and I think too, like you hit it on the head in terms of like the, the mental health support, because, you know, and again, and it's not to knock anyone who like is, you know, from the goodness of their heart trying to help out. But, you know, I've seen in, in, in one of the other battle buddy programs, you know, it was a, a female veteran that I was working with and she had extreme um, mental health issues and they just weren't equipped that one person was just not equipped and so unfortunately for the veteran she kind of got dropped off on the side you know and it was like and I get it I mean she was extremely challenging to work with even for myself and I have you know I have a social work background um but it you know so that's something that I'd like to offer as as you know like a a nugget you know is that even though everybody wants to volunteer and 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 has it in their heart that you know that's if you can't handle and and then speaking in terms of like suicide you know if you don't have like that you know some sort of background in you know some social work or you know uh mental health something or other it, it may be a little over the top for someone like that to to deal with because it's it's very serious you know and that's like why I gave some feedback about the crisis line i was just like <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Like, and I'm a professional and I'm talking to another professional and I'm not getting anywhere. And I'm in my head, I'm thinking, imagine if the veteran would have had to call and go through this. I mean, yeah, you can see why, you know, the, the end results aren't good because they're not getting that, you know, that help and attention, you know, from a skill base that they need, you know, you really have to know what you're doing to talk somebody off the ledge or to talk somebody out of killing themselves. It's yeah. a little different, you know, than just, you know, volunteer regular Absolutely. volunteer yeah and so our app is like again we're, we're I mean you know these are mentors and we train them the best we can because we you know mm-hmm. that's our that's where my specialty is and then also we have a, a Dr. A Dr. Milton um, and he's also a clinical psychologist of 23 years a marine veteran and so we're we're doing all the training right now but eventually once when there's funding we will make sure that they are accredited and certified and to the best right. of our ability, you know, again, they pass our beta tests. And so that's really the only way that they can become our veteran. And also one thing that I want to also let you know is that our app also allows for them to choose uh, whether it's female or male me- mentor, especially mm-hmm. for our MST um, survivors too, as well, who's calling in. We do have um, several females um, that are MST survivors themselves and have an additional training on top of that. And, and I was the one who trained them. And so that's also another option on the app. Again, it's so easy where it, you know, again, it's a press of a button and they can choose whether or not they want to talk to a male veteran or if they don't really care, that's fine. If they want to choose to talk to a female veteran, um, it will be delegated to our MST survive, um, and mentors. I have a question. Does all of the mentors have to be veterans? Yes. They do. Because, you know, yes. there's people such as myself that are dedicated to the veteran community, but we're not a veteran. But I just want to. Yeah, you can still volunteer, just like I said, because this is a veteran to veteran peer support. Volunteers, line. right. Yeah. And those are the things that are, were really crucial when I, when we were creating, when I was creating this app. Um, and so, you know, again, not to bash the, the veteran um, suicide hotline. Again, we're, you know, we're just trying to complement it. We're trying to make it better because we can make it better. Right. Uh, again, I was at five. That's been an issue for me. I've addressed that. Nobody has heard me. I took, you know, they close on 
major holidays. I understand it's a federal, it's, they, they're run by the federal, but that doesn't work for our veterans. Memorial Day holidays are the most sensitive time. The last thing is that all their, you know, all their crisis mental um, counselors are civilian. That is not going to work for our veterans, veterans, right. veterans. And so again, you know, I, I brought this up many years. And so two years ago, I said, I'm done. I'm going to leave, you know, this meeting and I'm going to create my own app and I'll let you guys know in a year. <laughs> and that was <laughs> what I said. And, you know, yeah. and so they, it's just like, these are three things that I've asked over and over. I'm just like, please stay longer, open longer so that you, they don't get rerouted over to national. So you need to hire someone that's a veteran or, you know, active service member. They need to have some kind of military background and try to open on holidays. That is the All most right. I'm, I'm not sure if they looked at me like I was crazy or anything. I, <laughs> I have no idea. So again, um, but that was where I was at two years ago. And I said, I'm, I'm going to let you guys know in a year, but the app will be developed. <laughs> well, I still want to thank you so much for coming thank on you. and sharing yeah. that important information. And as I said before, please come back and, of course. Make, you, and make yourself very, very known that we need to have some more of your information. It's been amazing. And congratulations, by the way, you're doing an amazing job. Yes, yes. We're, we're very excited. Again, the main goal is to really, you know, I mean, support our veterans. And this is the first app that's ever out there that has live calls from, from a mentor. And we can actually FaceTime them too as well. We can text them within our queue. We can, right. do, we can do anything we want. We can even locate them. That is so cool. Well, we have to move on. We got yes. others waiting, but I want to thank you so much for, for all the information that you've given us. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Okay, moving right along here. John, you were supposed to give a little something, something, but time is sort of passing by. Did you want to? That's true about me. Hmm? <laughs> time is passing me by. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. You got a lot of years to kick. <laughs> I've seen on TikTok, which I hate going on there because it's kind of it's kind of catchy, but there was a little lady shucking some corn the other day. She was a hundred years old. So we got a, we have a lot of more time on our hands. A lot of all you notice of I'm smiling. Okay. Huh? So, <laughs> what'd you say? I say you notice I'm smiling. There you go. <laughs> there you go. But John, I want to thank you so much for bringing Donna on. She was just outstanding. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm lucky to get around and meet meet some different organizations that don't get the publicity. That exactly. The she should. Is. She's going to get a whole bunch of publicity. Yeah, that's for sure, sure for what she's doing. Yeah. Taylor, can you yes, hear Dr. Cash's background? Our fabulous, wonderful. Of course, of course. Dr. Kathy Cash is the U.S. Army veteran and the founder CEO of Strategies for Hope. Dr. Cash volunteers in and works closely with the veteran community. She facilitates veterans groups and faith-based groups with an emphasis on supporting others by instilling hope. Dr. Cash is the host of Change Your Focus and Live Life, a podcast heard on all major platforms. Dr. Cash's guest today is Latia Suttle, who joined the military when she was 17 years old and honorably retired from the U.S. Army in 2014. Latia achieved the rank of Chief Warrant Officer II. Her MLS were nine... Uh-oh. Rose right there. You froze. Your MOS was nine. Diamonds and deployments. Oh, such as back. you you dropped out for a minute, Taylor. Taylor, you froze. Okay. A little bit. Go back to her Where MOS. Were <laughs> 920 B supply system technician okay. and 90 A property accounting technician. Latia had many duty assignments and assignments such as Darian Dan Griga, 
Belize, Camp Casey, South Korea, Fort Lee, Virginia, Fort Bush. What is it? Buckingham. 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 Puerto Rico, Baton Rouge. I know that one. Louisiana, <laughs> Camp Ari Arif John, Kuwait, March Air Reserve Base, California, and Iraq. Currently, she is involved in the veteran community through such organizations and affiliations as National Public Relations Chair for the National Association of Black Military Women, Chair of the Armed Service and Veterans Affairs Committee within the NAACP Beverly Hills Hollywood Branch, Women in NAACP, Vice Chair of the California Hawaii State Conference Armed Services and Veterans Affair of the NAACP, dual member of the American Legion post 252, member of the Mary, uh, Mary Bethune uh, Los Angeles section of the National Council of Negro Women, Inc., member of Community Coalition, member of You've done a lot, man. Member of, <laughs> <laughs> of Reimagine Child Safety Coalition and VP of Fortitude Empowerment Center. Ms. Latina is also a certified peer support specialist that assists individuals to regain control over their lives and their recovery process. Latia advocates for women veterans and their children stuck in the family court and dependency court crisis where children are being taken away from their mothers. Latia is also the recipient of the 2021 Betty Fisher Award, a prestigious honor awarded to an individual who demonstrates an outstanding commitment and dedication to the field of domestic violence prevention and intervention. Before we move on, Dr. Cash, could you please give us a short prayer? Okay, thank you, Taylor. Um, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we come before you just to say thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this platform. We thank you for this ability to share resources for, about involving our veteran brothers and sisters. Lord, all those who come on the show, all those who have the nonprofits, the resources, the information, we thank you that they're open and willing to share them. And then Lord, we thank you for Operation Confidence for their desire to continue to share the information for and about veterans. We thank you for the board, everyone who's involved, and we look forward to more great information as they continue to work on their projects to enhance the veteran community. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in your name. Amen. 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 And that's with your help too, Dr. Cash. Don't leave you out of prayer. <laughs> amen. So welcome, Latia. Um, thank you. I met Latia some years ago at a community event. We're both uh, peer specialists. We both do a lot in the community and we have different specialties. So when we look at what Latia does, um, and as, as Taylor said, you do a lot. She yes, has a she lot does. on her. She has a lot on her plate. Yes, she and does. One reason that I wanted, I, I invited her, is I wanted to share her latest bill proposal. Uh, she wrote and submitted a bill proposal to start identifying military veterans when cases are open in family court, and then this proposal later developed into SB 1182 Eggman. It's, it's already passed both the Senate Judiciary and the Assembly Judiciary Committees. There are a few more steps in the process before the bill makes it to the California governor's desk for signature to make law. Now, this is just a start to change what is happening amongst the veteran community and family court and dependency court. So, Latia, can you tell us more about what this, the reason you wrote this bill and what this bill involves? Um, well, the reason I wrote the bill, because I noticed that, you know, when I myself had a case in the family law court, they didn't ask me, um, they didn't ask, they don't ask people if they're military or veteran or anything. And I, I end up spending a lot of money on different things that's required. Um, if they, you know, require you to get evaluated or whatever the case is, that their list of resources with the court doesn't list the VA as a resource. When any form that you fill out, 
uh, doesn't ask you if you're a veteran or anything. Um, you know, I'm from, I was familiar with the, or I thought I was familiar with the Veterans Treatment Court. I thought the Veterans Treatment Court saw all, all veterans, but after my lived experience with family court and trying to get assistance with what was happening over there, I learned that the Veterans Treatment Court is only for those that have a criminal charge. In addition to having a substance abuse issue or a mental health issue. Um, if you don't have a criminal charge and you just have a court a case in some other court, you don't have that same wraparound support that's provided in the Veterans Treatment Court because in the Veterans Treatment Court, they have a liaison there, a case manager, somebody from the VA and whatever the issue is, they're done within a year and a half or so. So in, in family court, the cases there can drag out for years and you can actually, they can actually take your children from you with no criminal charge. So, um, you know, I've probably spent like $100,000 dealing with the family court. You have to pay for everything. And another thing that I learned the hard way was, you know, I'm 100% service connected um, for my injuries from the military. And so in order to get legal assistance or housing assistance, when you're going through that application process, they count VA compensation as income. Even though you, you could be unemployed, they count it as income. And then the income poverty level guidelines, for example, reflect, like if you have a family of two, you can't make over $1,200 or $1,300 a month. Right. Then right. With this VA compensation being counted, it disqualifies a uh, 100% service connected veteran from getting any legal assistance. It disqualifies them for receiving HUD VASH. So you're in a position where you have to pay three to $500 an hour to an uh, attorney with a family law case. And mm -hmm. that VA compensation could be gone in three to four hours of speaking with an attorney. And then you still have to pay your rent. So it's like you're put in a position to either pay for your rent or fight your case, you know, fight for your child. And it's just, you know, one of those things like the previous guest spoke about, you know, this is something that can uh, have a veteran going in a downward spiral and may contemplate suicide. You're, you're put in a very difficult position. So this is an area where it wasn't getting any attention or support for veterans and you're putting them in that situation after they've honorably served their country, you know. So how long did it take you from the time you wrote the bill to get it as far as it's gotten? Uh, well, I wrote the proposal, I think last year. So okay. it, it takes a while to go through the process, you know, and then I had, I had been writing to different Congress members and representatives for, for years, you know, trying to bring attention to the situation. And um, it was Senator Susan Eggman office that was receptive to my bill proposal. And Senator Eggman herself is a veteran and also a previous social worker. So I, I feel that, well, I have written to other representatives that has a, a military background, but you know, Senator Susan Eggman was very receptive to it. And I, I felt like because of her military experience and because she had previously been a social worker, she was more receptive to it and, you know, helping us move it forward. Because uh, just like uh, uh, Donna said earlier, and what you've talked about, you have to, the, you know, there are certain hours that you have to have problems if you're a veteran. Mm -hmm. And then there are certain conditions that you have to have in order to get the services. Right. You know, trying to keep your child, trying to maintain the parentage of your child. If you're not drug addicted, if you're not uh, destitute, if you're, you know, all of these things, if you don't have a criminal record, all of these, all of these things cause a veteran to get overlooked mm -hmm. for the services. Because mm -hmm. I remember when we talked and you, and you shared that, and you even said it here, that if you're doing a, going through a criminal case, you know, all the wraparound services, they just swoop there. You have this, you have that, nothing comes out of your pocket. But then if you do not have that mental health problem, if you don't have that, that substance use issue, it's your own, your own. Right. And that's just very unfortunate. You know, I'm, I'm glad that there's services there for, you know, those that can get into veterans treatment court, 
But what about those that honorably serve this country and they don't have a criminal record? They don't, like, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs, I never have. So why do I have to be in that position before you provide me the assistance, you know? So um, you have to look at different areas, different courts, different agencies to see if they're identifying veterans. There are a lot that are not identifying veterans and they get into these situations and and where they probably feel like there's there's no hope. But, you know, I just, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm thankful that I didn't have any type of substance abuse or urge to drink or smoke or do drugs. And I, I could keep, you know, my head straight and strong and keep fighting for this because this is really, it was something that could, you know, tip someone over and, and just give up. But, you know, I kept pushing forward. I, you know, kept going to the, there's a, the, it's a commission, the what it, Veterans Advisory Commission. They have a, a meeting every month in LA and I go to the meetings every month for years saying the same thing. Sometimes I felt like I was talking to the wall because you're not like, so, but I kept, just kept, I said, they're gonna get tired of hearing hearing me. So, you know, recently they, they also, like Military and Veterans Affairs of LA provided a, a support letter for SB 1182. So it's like, you just had to keep pushing and, and keep fighting for it, you know? So what can the veteran community, what can veteran family members, what can we do as a community here to support this bill, to support the ongoing efforts? Yeah, so we have one more step now, the, it uh, going to the governor's desk. And once it gets to the governor's desk, then we need uh, some more support letters from you know, different organizations, the community, veterans, active duty, whoever can write support letters to, you know, move it forward for the governor to be encouraged to sign off, sign this into to law. So, um, you know, they can send the support letters to myself at latia.subtle at gmail.com or uh, one of my colleagues at she deserves 25 at gmail.com. Okay, could you, you have that in, in your chat? Yeah. Yes, I can. Okay. Okay. Because one of the things is, it's just amazing how when these, when these situations come up and you share it because it's a real issue and then it takes years for the VA, for the government, for anyone to, re to realize this is a real issue. Just going back to um, um, suicide only happens between 8 and 4.30. Monday through th Monday through Friday, you know, homelessness only happens, in, you know, fr Friday at three o'clock. If you haven't gotten in, you out of you out of luck for the rest of the weekend. It's it's amazing how it's just now coming to light when it's been a problem for a long, long time. So I applaud you for stepping up and saying something. You said you've been involved in this, so this is your walk. This is your story that you're sharing, and I applaud you for having the courage to continue to fight. Um, because like you said, you don't drink, you don't do drugs. This very well could have led you down that path. Mm -hmm. And it could have been, well, fine, you wanted me to do this anyway. Here, I'm doing it. Now can I get the help? Right. But you're choosing right. to maintain your integrity as a veteran. So right. I applaud you for that. Thank and you I so still much. Agree. I definitely applaud you for it. You keep up the good work. Thank you. And if you need a letter of support, please uh, send me uh, some information and I'll be happy to put it on oh. our stationery and send okay. it as well. Thank we you. had a, a female veteran on the show probably a, a couple of years ago, Keisha Dixon. Yes, um, that's, that's oh. my colleague that I oh, was there talking we go. about. Okay. She, she has had the same experience. Exactly. And so yeah, so it was someone else that uh, me and her probably went to several times and she was like, you know what, you two need to meet. You two have the same Good. passion. And, awesome. and so y'all need to talk. So yeah, so yeah, I've been working Yeah, she was on our show a couple of right. years ago and talked a little bit about her. And like you said, it was just, she goes to active duty, her husband comes, or, you know, the children's father comes to pick up the children and he never brings them back, right. you know, wow. and because she's gone on active duty, I, imagine, you know, the, just so her story was also very powerful. I'm so glad to hear that you guys <laughs> have connected because that's the first person I thought of that could write a support letter for you and speak. Mm -hmm. And so that's wonderful. I'm glad that you know her because we, you know, I know for me, I, I tried connecting her with a couple folks as well. And it was dead end everywhere. And this was, mm -hmm. you know, pretty high 
you know, high profile uh, legal, you know, um, groups. And, and again, it's just like the, the veterans and the women in particular and women veterans in courts. It, it's, it's just not, doesn't, it's not fair and it's not set up to, to help and, and, you know, help us kind of get resolution to the problem. Right. It's so I'm glad to hear cause. that you know yeah. her. Yeah. It's not a popular <laughs> cause when it, when it becomes a popular cause, there she is. When it becomes a popular cause, then everybody's going to jump on the bandwagon, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, to want to help and support. And we don't yeah. have to do that now. Because I think about, imagine, think about all the women who are in this situation who don't speak up, who are just sitting by the wayside and have not have decided, you know what, I'm just not going to fight it because I don't have any help. And I'll see them when they turn 18. Or whatever yeah. the case may be. And you know, so, the sad part about all of that is, is the, it's the system again. You know, you go back to it. Like you say, you never drank and smoked and done all of that stuff. I don't know how many veterans that I've talked to who went to go and get evaluated. And they had, and they said, oh, you got to act crazy in order to get this, this, or this, that. I'm like, <laughs> you know, and I was like, you know, no. Like me, I'm going through a case now. I said, no, I refuse to act like I'm crazy. You know, it's like. And then get denied anyway. You know? Right, right. So, that's amazing. This yeah. is some, some great fishes. And it's the benefits that we're so man, deserving who's this, of. Who's this young man here? The, the one that's, that's your baby. Denied. Yeah, that's that's my son. He uh, just turned twelve in July. So yeah, so I've been yeah, trying to be constant tie. in his life. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a tie, but it's just the way he's wearing his. Yeah, jacket. that's sure. No. <laughs> he's a tall. He's a big little fella, huh? right? Yeah, and that, and that picture he was like he's maybe in his teens a little bit. Like right, that, and that picture was taken in December, and so now, uh, now. August, he he's almost up there with me. Oh right? my goodness! Yeah. <laughs> and I'm five foot eleven, so oh yeah, my he's, goodness, he's going to be over wow. six feet. Yeah. Yay! Well, that's so cute. Yeah. All right. So well, and you so know what? Well, we, we know some of the same people, Dr. Cash and Michelle is up. Give my love to Pat Kelly, mm -hmm. <laughs> Miss Pat Jackie Kelly. I've been knowing her for years and years. She's participated in some of the events that we had. Remember, she was at our event, Charles, when we did it at the sports arena before it shut down and became uh, yeah. another another organization, another program, another company. Remember? I, I yeah, remember. she's very, very popular. Tell her I sent my love. She had right. to come on the show too. Invite her on the show. We'll do, Dr. We'll Dr. Cass. Yeah. You see her often? Yeah, she's our commander. She's the commander yeah, right. of the post. I'm first vice commander. Oh, okay. Uh, so yes, we interact often. Right. Okay, great. Well, tell her that we have invited her on the show. She's known me forever. <laughs> okay, we'll do that. All right. And so again, thank you, Latia, for sharing your story. And um, everyone will be able to see this so that that will hopefully garner more support for you for this cause. And just get make the awareness, make people aware that this is happening. Because so many people sit on the outside and think, oh, you're a veteran. Oh, you got it together. Oh, you get everything. You guys are having mm -hmm. made. Right. Uh -uh. No, you don't have. Uh -uh. There's only certain, there's only certain ways that you can get that having it made, quote, as they say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, we will continue well, I, I to support. I appreciate you, ha you having me. And if anyone wants to look it up, it's SB 1182. You have to type Eggman behind it, E G G M A N, because if you just put in SB 1182, all kinds of stuff oh, pops up. But if you put the senator's last name behind it, Eggman then the uh, information pops up about that. I found Can you put that in the chat, please? <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, great. Thank well, you thank so you much. Thank you so much, right. and you're always welcome. Thank and you. I, get, uh, I get involved in a lot of legal stuff, just at City Heart. We get referrals from all over, and I've been working about a year and a half on that, on some things. I had to find a probate attorney once, try finding one of those for free. And uh, <laughs> it's a real mess to try and do that. And your point about the VA and just the, the funding for those things is really good because it really isn't much. Just have to dig and dig and dig. It takes forever. It's good for you. Okay. All Moving right, right along. You. Thank you All so right. much. Thank you, Martha. Thank you. Thank you so much. Martha, you want to introduce our returning 
bi-monthly guest. I wanted because he does have a visual impairment, so we wanted to be able to have him properly introduced. Absolutely. I will be introducing um, Richard Cook today. For 33 years, Richard served in the Armed Special Forces Operations, seven years with the VA hospital as the security human resources uh, staff or background. He was promoted to GS-11, um, Chief of Payroll. He is now the CEO of Pro Level Entertainment Foundation, representing talent and models in the in entertainment and film industry. Richard is a former survivor of three strokes, a major one in February 2016, followed by a massive stroke that caused brain damage, including aphasia on June 3rd. The, the third stroke affected his vision, and he is now visually impaired. All of the strokes in one year caused a tumor were caught, that were caused by a tumor in his heart, blocking, blocking the blood flow, but he's now fully recovered. Today, Richard entered in the Creative Arts Festival at the West Los Angeles VA Hospital, where he entered his photography and plans to do an essay in an inspiring way. Richard is also um, an author and has a bestseller book sold on Amazon called I Once Was Whole. Take it away, Richard. Well, thank you, everybody. One thing I will add, my next book's going to be coming out in approximately a couple of weeks. And that one's titled, It's Not a Race, It's a Journey, to Succeed and Achieve. That's my next book, because what I'm going to about to explain is what I've been doing currently. Right. One, one yesterday, I just did 50 miles, 15 miles of a walk. I couldn't, do that. I couldn't do that when the strokes happened, but I did 15 miles yesterday. Uh, How long did that take? Uh, roughly, I got a look at the time, but I believe it was about five hours, but I still did it. Yeah, Good job, job, Richard. I, I did it in Good a creative job. way. Thank you very much. I did it in a creative way. What I did, I, along the way, I still took pictures, so I had to work out the photos and still make them artistic. So right. That's kind of what I did yesterday as well. And it made it calmly, I'm saying calmly for myself, where I can just be calm, take the pictures, and enjoy what was going on. I enjoy went, the scenery, huh? Yeah, I went from Inglewood through Sepulveda, straight up to Sepulveda to Venice Boulevard, I walked into the Venice Pier. Holy. And then took pictures out there and, and then walked back. But then I got, I was already at 15 miles. So I said, now I'm going to go and take the bus back. So I took the bus back. So I cheated <laughs> yeah, a little bit, but I still got there. I still got there. Did you take a nap when you got home? <laughs> uh, I fell asleep completely. Completely <laughs> fell asleep. I know. That's so amazing. It was, it, was a good, it was a good workout. I think. And I think I lost some weight a little bit because I got a little bit. Uh, it's it's going down, so my weight is going down. <laughs> okay. Why don't you tell the audience about some of the other spectacular things you've done? And I think Charles has some pictures. Okay. Um, That's some of his I, artwork. Yeah, I took a picture of the moon, although it was very clear moon. I was still able to photograph it and still turn it into a red moon and then there's a few others to go then that's actually an area here by the Ken Han Park and so I took those pictures in those areas uh, so that's what I've done for the photos this one right here I took at Sioux Falls South Dakota so I took the Sioux Falls South Dakota one and that was one that was right by the falls right there. This one was just the other day. It was at also at the Kenneth Pond Park. So I took a picture of the duck like that. And you turn it into art. Yes, that's I turned amazing. it into art. So that's all my 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 areas of the background of special forces. The one right there to oh so you moved up. The one right there the, with the green with the yellow stripe, that's where you're part of special operations. Okay. Mm -hmm. Look how pretty that is. It's amazing what he does with that. Yeah, and that, that one was actually right by my house. <laughs> really? Yeah. 
course, um, that's the, that's the retirement letter from the general. Mm-hmm. Oh, I am retired. I know myself just waving high. <laughs> that was at a event uh, that was known as the uh, uh, the Hawaiian Festival out there in by uh, Artesia. Yeah, that was like uh, two weeks ago, right? Uh, no, ago. actually, it actually was about two years ago. Oh wow! Well, yeah. They didn't have the one. They had a Polynesian thing a couple of weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, right. That's my other one right there. That's the one of a black and white for the Ferris wheel. Where is that at? Uh, that one was actually right out here by the church in our area. Okay. Is that you? And of course, that's myself surfing. A uh, physically person who is weak from their left side from those strokes, I'm still going surfing now. All right. All right. And that's that was right by my house as well, too. If I see the item and it looks like I turn into something that's creative, I'll do it. Just like that one right there, that, that hibiscus. Well, listen, you, yeah, I wanna see more like, your artwork is extraordinary, but people don't know what you actually do since after you've had this stroke. If that's you doing one of your walks, is that it? Was yeah, that, that, that was at the Golden Age Games in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I did okay. the 1500 meter power walk. Now that's a like a fast walk, and that's not me where I'm I'm moving. It doesn't show that, but I am moving pretty fast. <laughs> but I right. end up getting to that point. But they still judge me based on my age bracket, uh, 65, and I took the fourth place. Now keep in mind, I am a stroke survivor from those three strokes, but I still did the walk and and got the fourth place ribbon. That's amazing. Wow. All right, that's it. Okay, well, next time you have to come back and show us when you climb the mountain and, and some of your other activities you've been doing. You've been well, doing a lot. What's what scheduled for next year is still, the, I've got the power walk for the next time for uh, the Golden Age Games, but I'm also going to be doing sprinting. Now, keep in mind, I haven't sprinted since I was 17 years old, but I'm going to be a sprinter, and because I've been training on that, so I'll do the sprinting, but I'll be still very fast compared to what the stroke has caused me. That is so great. Congratulations, Mike. You've been a, such a fabulous role model, hasn't he? You yeah. didn't let us hey. stop it. And you've been in a lot of other activities, which you're going to send us next, have some pictures for the next time you're on, because I remember you were doing not only uh, mountain climbing, but you were doing some skeet uh, shooting and, and yeah, I, archery. I've been doing and archery. I've been doing uh, skiing. And skiing, yeah, that's what we want to see that. I mean, yeah, it's so those, inspirational. Those, 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 you know, I'm scheduled for uh, the ski clinic through the VA. So that's going to be coming up in December. Yeah, but you got and, some pictures from before that. Before, yeah, I want to, and then I would want to show your workout program. Yeah. You want to see the but pictures you, when you come back from Hawaii and you, you're dealing with one of those big old monster waves. I have, I have um, the Waves of Valor again at the end of this month, close to the end of the month, around, around the 17th of August. Uh, back there again, so they'll be taking more pictures of me doing that. Okay, well, we look forward to having you on next time, and and uh, I want everyone to know too that Lauren will be on in a couple of weeks, and she's going to actually. Lauren has a creative art. I mean, what is that called? Creative uh, uh, auction, okay. and she's going to display some of his artwork. So that's pretty exciting. So with one the- one area I tried to send was as the moon was right there mm-hmm. as everybody knows a blue moon is the moon appearing twice in a month mm-hmm. i actually turned it colorfully wise into a blue moon so okay. that that you can see in the future okay all right that's phenomenal thank you so much we got to move on now taylor take it away girlfriend 
CEOs that you never knew had a disability. CEOs with disabilities have an impact on society through their innovative, creative, and out-of-the-box thinking. They have also led the way for promoting diversity and inclusivity into the workplace while not letting their disabilities be the sole trait that defines their abilities to lead. Sir Richard Bronson, founder of Virgin Group. Sir Richard Bronson is the founder of Virgin Group, a family-owned growth capital investor. The corporation now controls more than 400 companies globally. Boasting more than 53 million companies worldwide, Virgin Groups earn over $16.6 billion um, in annual revenue, according to its website. The company employs 69,000 people um, in 25 countries. Bronson attributes much of his success to his dyslexia and learning disability. According to an interview with the Washington Post, delegation played a large role in his approach to running his business. His motivations are rooted in wanting to do good in the world. J.K. Rowling, best-selling author and or best-selling and award-winning author, best known Known for her Harry Potter series, J.K. Rowling, always knew she wanted to be an author. At age 11, she wrote her first novel about seven cursed diamonds and the people who owned them. Rowling came up with the idea for Harry Potter in 1990 while, setting, or while sitting in a delayed train from Mas or Manchester to London King's Cross. Rowling has shared her Rowling has shared how depression played in her life and at one point contemplated suicide and suffered chronic depression. In a Harvard University commencement speech, she stated, had I really succeeded at anything else, I might never have found the determination to succeed in the one area where I truly belong. I was set free because my greatest fear had been realized and I was still alive. Um, Paul Ophelia, founder of Kinko's, aka FedEx Office, is a businessman who found or businessman founded what is now known as FedEx Office. He built Kinko's from, uh, also known as FedEx, uh, from a single shop in Santa Barbara to a national chain with more than 1,000 locations and 25,000 employees. FedEx bought Kinko's in 2004. It had been reported that. Orphelia never carried a pen, often allowing others to handle correspondence for him because he didn't like to, I like this guy, read or write. He has <laughs> dyslexia and ADHD, <laughs> I can just do the work for me, which he credits as the blessings that allowed him to see the world differently from his peers. There's Tommy Hilfiger, American fashion designer. Tommy Hilfiger built an extraordinary and widely distributed fashion line from the ground up. The company made strides in the disability community by recently unbuilding a clothing line geared towards people with disabilities. From a very young age, Hilfiger was equipped with an entrepreneurial spirit and an iconic eye for fashion. He wasn't diagnosed with dyslexia until much in his life, although he shared he often felt embarrassed to reach out to people for help. Although to read and write, he tapped into his creative strengths in other ways and diverted his attention to the world of fashion with a highly successful brand with estimated sales of $6.7 billion. There is Barbara Cochran. As a child, Cochran often felt isolated and lonely due to her dyslexia. She struggled to read in the third grade, or she struggled to read in the third grade and often found herself daydreaming about creative businesses ideas that were not related to the school curriculum. She struggled in high school and college, received straight Ds, and also experienced a ton of setbacks. She job hopped a total of 20 jobs, but never gave up on her quest to find her true passion and career that she was passionate about. Today, Cochran is an American businesswoman, investor, author, and TV personality, has in over 80 businesses and is highly recognized, motivational, and inspirational. She is also the author of the best-selling book, Shark's Tales, how she turned $1,000 into a billion-dollar business. And then there's Steve Jobs, co-founder and former CEO of Apple. You can thank Steve, or you can thank Apple founder Steve Jobs for some of the world's most innovative tech products that make today's communication and connectivity a breeze.
Although Jobs grew up with dyslexia, he never claimed or publicly shared his disability. He struggled in school and dropped out after one semester at Reed College. But instead of giving up, he decided to think outside of the box in 1976 by conceptualizing the iconic Apple computer in what was, his, in, what was in his parents' garage. According to Business Insider, 10 to 15 percent of the U.S. population are dyslexic, but only a few individuals acknowledge and receive treatment for it. Jobs' disability served as a creative gift that allowed him to take risks and chances with his concepts for Apple. And here are just a few CEOs with disabilities. Martha, take it away. All right. Right, that was great information. It's on you, Martha. Okay. First, Hispanic Medal of Honor recipient. The Medal of Honor was introduced during the American Civil War and is the highest military decoration presented by the United States government to a member of its armed forces. The recipient must have distinguished themselves at the risk of their own life above and beyond the call of duty and action against an enemy of the United States. The first recipient was Corporal Joseph H. Dick Castro, one of the Union Army of the Union Army for his actions at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania on July 3rd. 1863 during the American Civil War. However, Private David Bennis Barkley was a member of the regular army dur during World War I and has been recognized as the army's first Hispanic Medal of Honor recipient. In 1864, Seaman John Ortega became the first Hispanic member of the U.S. Navy to receive the Medal of Honor. And in 1900, Private France Silva became the first person of Hispanic descent in the U.S. Marine Corps to receive the medal. The most recent recipient is Sergeant First Class Leroy Petrie for his actions in Afghanistan. Corporal de Castro was a member of the Massachusetts Infantry, a militia that was not part of the regular army. 61 men of Hispanic heritage have been awarded the Medal of Honor. Uh, of the 61 Medals of Honor presented to Hispanics, two were presented to members of the United States Navy, 13 were members of the United States Marine Corps and 46 to members of the United States Army. 42 Medals of Honor were presented posthumously. 15 recipients were born outside of the United States mainland, one each in Chile and Spain, five in Mexico and eight in Puerto Rico. Seaman Philip Bazar from Chile received the medal in January 1865 and Seaman John Ortega from Spain in December of 1865. The first Mexican recipient was Staff Sergeant Macario Garcia, and the first Puerto Rican recipient was PFC Fernando Luis Garcia. First Lieutenant Rudolph B. Davila of Hispanic Filipino descent was the only person of Filipino ancestry to receive the medal for his actions in the war in Europe during World War II. Private Joe P. Martinez was the first Hispanic American recipient to be awarded the Medal of Honor posthumously for combat heroism on American soil during the same conflict. First Lieutenant Baldomero Lopez is the only Hispanic graduate of the United States Naval Academy to receive the Medal of Honor. Captain Hubert Roque, Roque Versace was the first recipient of the Medal of Honor to be given to an Army POW for his actions during captivity in Southeast Asia during the Vietnam War. And President Barack Obama awarded the Medal of Honor to 17 Hispanics on March 18, 2014, in a ceremony in the White House. The award comes through the National Defense Authorization Act, which called for a renew of Jewish American and Hispanic American veterans from World War II the Korean War and the Vietnam War to ensure that no prejudice has shown to those deserving the Medal of Honor. And unfortunately, we were on a, Connie was unable to find any Hispanic service women who were, who were awarded the Medal of Honor. So it sounds like they haven't done one yet. I, would, I wouldn't imagine that uh, a female hasn't been performing to that level of, of, of you know, uh, awarding service, but 
we'll wait to see what happens. Yeah, I really looked and I was definitely disappointed and quite sure there must be, but I wasn't unable to find. But thank you so much for that great information and presentation. Okay, moving right along here. Charles, it's on you for some hot news. You know, I like to dramatize it a little bit. Hot, 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 hot news. You know, hot news. It's like, you know, it's like the sun with a little bit of hot sauce on it. It's, just, it's hot and flavor. Right, 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 right. Okay. Today's hot news is about Sergeant William Carney. He's the first African-American Medal of Honor recipient. On uh, of the 3,498 service members who have received the Medal of Honor through the U.S. history, only 88 have been black. The first black recipient of the award was Sergeant William H. Carney. He earned the honor by protecting one of the United States' greatest symbols during the Civil War, the American flag. Carney was born into slavery in Norfolk, Virginia in 1840. His family was eventually granted freedom and moved to Massachusetts where he was eager to learn and secretly got involved in the academics, despite laws and restrictions that banned blacks from learning to read and write. Carney had wanted to pursue a career in the church, but when the Civil War broke out, he decided the best way he could serve God was by serving in the military to help free the oppressed. In March of 1863, which just happens to be 100 years before I was born, uh, mm -hmm. Car Carney joined the Union Army and was attached to Company C of the 54th Massachusetts Colored Infantry Re Regiment, the first official black unit recruited for the Union in the North. Forty other black men served with him, including two of famed abolitionist Frederick L. Douglass's sons. Within a few months, Carney's training would be put to the ultimate test during the, for the unit's first major combat mission in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, he was in charge on uh, Fort Wagner. On July 18th in 1863, the soldiers of Carney's uh, regiment led the charge on Fort Wagner. During the battle, the unit's color guard was shot. Carney, who was just a few feet away, saw the dying man stumble and he scrambled to catch the, fa the falling flag. Despite suffering several serious gunshot wounds himself, Carney kept the symbol of the Union high, Union held high as he crawled up the hill to the walls of Fort Wagner, urging his fellow troops to follow him. He planted the flag in the sand at the base of the fort and held it upright until his near lifeless body was rescued. Even though, even then, though he didn't give up. Many witnesses said Carney refused to give the flag to his rescuers, holding onto it tighter until, with assistance, he made it to the Union's temporary barracks. He was promoted for his actions, and so Carney lost a lot of blood and nearly lost his life, but not once did he allow the flag to touch the ground. His heroics inspired other soldiers that day and were cru crucial to the North securing victory at Fort Wagner. Carney was promoted to the rank of sergeant for his actions. For his bravery, Carney was awarded the Medal of Honor in May of 23rd, 1900, which just happens to be 63 years before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> Carney's legacy serves as a shining example of the patriotism that Americans felt at that time, despite the color of his skin of their skin. As for the 54th Massachusetts Color Infantry Regiment in which Carney served, it was dis disestablished long ago but reactivated in 2008. It now serves as a National Guard ceremonial unit that renders honorary funerals and state functions. It was even invited to march in the President Barack Obama's inaugural parade. And that's today's hot news. All right. He had some pictures of him, didn't he? Uh, no. Okay. You but did. I have, huh? I did send him, I believe, but it's okay. Well, we have a few minutes. Wake yeah. up, John. <laughs> we want you to give, give us a... I'm listening. Okay. <laughs> I want you to end this before we start closing down the show. And oh, before... No. And before I got to show my funny animal. Well, we ain't through yet. I'm giving him oh, okay, before okay, you do your funny. Okay, Can good. you give us a little bit of stretching and yoga real quick, John? Oh, okay. Oh, sure. What the heck? What the heck? <laughs> you know you like to do to give us some. So, uh, I only take a couple minutes. We'll just do more stretching, but we'll do a little bit of a, always start with breathing. 
I was uh, talking to somebody yesterday about this. Uh, it takes me about three minutes of meditation breathing to go from here after working with PVACC <laughs> down to here so that things are calm. You know, I used to I used to go home and have a drink when I felt like that, and instead now I just do that. So it's, it's more about, healthier. It's all about that belly breathing. So if you just always think about when you're breathing. Are you breathing from here or here? If you're breathing from here, you're going to relax. If you're breathing from here, you're going to be stressed. And that's why I always start the yoga classes with that breathing. So just like bring it up in the lungs and then just let it go. So we've been sitting here for a while, so let's do a little bit of stretching. So I think I'm going to do that. Uh, Thing I've done before. So at least just everybody bring your arms up overhead and then just sit there and then just bring them down and then bring them up. Uh oh, you make me sleep. <laughs> it makes you yarn. Well, of course, that's because you're finally breathing. Yeah. You're sitting there listening. All right. So drop your left hand down and bring your right arm up and over. Just a big stretch, 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 stretch. And then maybe look up at the ceiling for two breaths. And then just bring your other arm up and do it the other side. Because in yoga, yoga is a union of mind and body and we do balance. So we do some on one side and we do it on the other. And come on back up. Bring your hands here. So we're going to do one more thing. Bring your, this is it, Martha, you've done this a few times. So you want to bring your arm, your hands together like that, and then bring your elbows up, sitting up nice and tall. And on your exhale, you want to send your arms out round your back. <coughs> this is called cat. And then inhale. See if you can bring your arms up straight overhead. And then moving up in your chair a little bit. And then bring your arms behind you as you come back. Exhale and bring your shoulders up to your chin up. Like that. Now we'll do two more of those. So just inhale up. And get them out. Exhale out. Inhale up and then exhale back. That now you're moving an awful lot of your back and your whole body when you're doing this. One more. And up and back. Exhale out. Inhale up. And Exhale. So, how was that? That was good. That's great. I told you guys. Tuesdays at what time, John? 11 o'clock. <laughs> Send me an email if you want to be on the mailing list. You get a, a very wide variety of people showing up. So, yeah, all right. And you can be in a wheelchair or not. We do both seated and standing, but that. Uh, we also show people in wheelchairs how to do the standing stuff seated. So that's amazing. Thank you Thanks, so John. much. We had, a, we had a good time. All right. All right. Time's rolling, rolling on out here. You're going to give us some hot, funny news. <laughs> some uh, today. Funny uh, hot news. Funny hot news. Funny hot news. <laughs> funny news or hot, funny news. It's all, it's all funny stuff. <laughs> You know, okay. We're going we're going to uh go with a uh one of the clips cuz you know uh kind of be sending me some of this stuff and some of the stuff I have already. But I'm going to show one of yours today, you know, that you like. Thank uh, you. You know, this is the uh the dog when it's time to take a bath, you know. He's like Let's take a bath. You gonna take a bath? Huh? No, I'm cool. I mean, was you asking or was there a demand? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of confused on if you were telling me or asking. I say no. You, come on, man. Come on. Let's just hold on, man. Not like this, man. 
Not like this, man, please. It's like the yeah. Matrix, man. Not like this, man. Come on, man. I just had a bad, man. I just had a bad Wednesday, man. It was Wednesday in April, but it was Wednesday nonetheless, man. Come on, man. Come on. Not like this, man. Let's discuss. Let's discuss. Hey, girl, put, put the camera down, man, and help your boy, man. Put the portal piece down and help your boy, man. Come on, man. Let's have a discussion real quick. Let's we'll take a bath. We'll take a bath. Huh? All right. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. What's that? that was cute. That was cute. Wasn't that cute? I had to send that to him. That was funny. <laughs> okay, so we want to thank you, Martha. You're going to start uh, shutting it down. And then from there, Taylor. Actually, Taylor, you need yes. off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. and we're yeah. out of gotcha. <laughs> Um, before Ms. Connie closes, I would like to remind our viewers and listeners about our amazing advertisement rates. We have 20 and 30 second advertisement slots available. So please email info at operationconfidence.org. Again, info at operationconfidence.org for more information and visit um, Operation Confidence website at www.operationconfidence.org. Again, www at operationconfidence.org. Visit the resource page for some amazing resources. I would also like to inform our viewers and listeners about Amazon Smell. When making your next purchase on Amazon, please go to Amazon Smell and type in Operation Confidence in the Choose Your Organization donation box. Amazon will make a small donation to Operation Confidence. And to get involved in Operation Confidence Tiny Houses Project, visit our website and send us a message on how you would like to be involved. And to our viewers, we would like to also inform you about Operation Confidence's Positive Redirection Team, which is a group of male and female veterans who are mentors, having overcome similar challenges and situations during transition back into mainstream society. To be connected or to become a, a team member, please email us at info at operation.org, that email address again, info at operationconfidence.org. And we are also excited to inform you that we're moving forward in our Operation Confidence's Combat Boots and Lace Women Veterans Mentoring and Creative Arts Group. To get involved or to nominate someone that you think would be a good fit for this veteran program, please email me at martha at operationconfidence.org. Again, that email address, martha at operationconfidence.org. Okay, well, we're going to wind it on down here now. And as always, we want to remind our listeners and our viewers that our goal for the show is to raise awareness about Operation Confidence mission, which is to provide stable housing for our veterans with a wide range of supportive services. So we need your support. We need you to get involved. So please, if you're going to join, we would love to have you to join our grassroots efforts. So by doing, doing so, send us an email at info at operationconference.org. Or send us, I'm sorry, yeah, send us an email and then visit our website at www.operationconference.org. And I'm kind of sad, but I understand they have to go. As Taylor and Martha won't be with us next week. They have other commitments, but they will return the following week. So we're going to miss you guys. Love y'all. Where's the party at? I know. Huh? Ah. Yeah, you know. So y'all is going to be on you and I. Hopefully Dr. Cash will fill in for us too, but she's a busy girl. But to all our viewers, please do not forget to subscribe to our Operation, I'm sorry, our American Invisible Heroes youtube page we got our own youtube page so please subscribe for that and pass the word on to your colleagues and friends so we're saying goodbye and we want to thank you all our amazing guests and of course always our hosts and we look forward to seeing you next week goodbye all right gotta do that <laughs> got to do you bye-bye do you bye-bye charles i love that i love it Get the bye bye in. Got to get the bye bye in. Got to do the bye bye in. Thank you. See you next week.